we're picking our buckwheat by hand. Uh, and it's an example of going back to the basics, living simply. And also, by doing so, it becomes uh, not just an organic product, but an artisanal product. It becomes a part of us living together with the land, being self-sustained. Yeah, Sonny, our goose is answering as well. Living together with animals and symbiosis, uh, valuing the earth, not putting chemicals in the earth, and providing for ourselves. And uh, buckwheat is as close as you can come to wonder food, to super food uh, among northern foods. It's, a, it's pretty much complete nutrition. There's a really wonderful uh, buckwheat milk that I really highly recommend. And it's so easy and like fulfilling to actually pick, to feel it with your hands and it just comes out. It's also so-called pseudo grain because it's not a grain per se. It's not related to weed and uh, oatmeal and, and other grains. But it, it is, in effect, the, the seed of it is like grain-like. That's why it's called pseudo-grain. And uh, we developed several different techniques to pick it. One of the best ones that we found is a, is a large, big container. And uh, simply putting it like this. And basically pulling all the, all the buckwheat off. And then, since it's already the nitrogen the whole plant is full of nitrogen so it the plant itself is an excellent fertilizer it doesn't just put something from the soil that it puts back into the soil in which case quite a few minerals would be missing that we're pulling and now as food but it brings the nitrogen that i mentioned and it binds it in its in its own biomass so we will compost this and this will become a fertilizer so it's something that gives on many different levels it gives us food it gives us ground cover uh, preventing evaporation and it fixes the soil so it's just something really wonderful and uh you know and we'll, we'll make a today we'll make a first first meal out of our own grown buckwheat so this is also something that's very symbolic and we started picking this with uh, refugees together and uh we were learning as we went starting with uh starting with picking it by hand like this in small bunches and now sort of kind of learning, picking, p uh, grabbing like a, grabbing a big, big wand of buckwheat, bending it over. And this is about, this is about two, three times faster than the method we, we did before. So it's an example of just developing different techniques. Uh, I study anthropology and archaeology was one of my uh, favorite, uh, uh, parts of anthropology. I mean, uh, anthropology is broken down into like social, studying social groups, uh, ethnography, and also studying ancient cultures, uh, uh, archaeologically or recreate, uh, or recreating the different methods. Because a lot of it, we don't have complete records about a lot of different cultures. So we have to recreate and very often, uh, especially farming uh, techniques are recreated. And I find that organic, and biodynamic um, farming is also going back to the roots, but not just the roots that were here 100, 150 years ago, but roots of our ancestors, how we treated the earth, how we survived for millennia, for eons. We live close with the earth. We didn't need chemicals. We, we, managed, we managed to survive. And what's happening now with climate change, with wars that very often are about water, uh, Oh, oh, what's up? Sorry. What, what do you have to say about all the ecological wars, about climate change? Yes, yes. For example, the war in Syria started after the longest drought in Syria's history. The war in Ukraine now has to do with Crimea not having access to water. As we break down our own planet, we will see more and more of social and ecological collapse and more war, more upheavals. If we don't do this, if we don't go back to the basics and start start over in a way it's really important something like this happened in the united states in the 60s and 70s during oil embargo when there was a back to the earth back to the earth back to the back to the farm movement and a lot of organic farms started a lot of ecological industry started <clears throat> everything from uh effective microorganisms to earth to composting worms a lot of techniques that we use uh, now were developed uh, by people going to vermont uh, or in Oregon, Northern California, going back to farming mm. and farming in ecological ways. And the same movement is happening now. It's happening in Western Europe where people after a college with degrees are going back to farms. It's much harder here in Poland because Poland is now really 
mega neoconservative. There is a whole campaign against nature, against ecology that's being driven by how the present government is in the pockets of large corporations. It's really that simple because uh, this is this is our responsibility. It's our responsibility to, to nature. It's res our responsibility to the soil. And what we're seeing around us is incredible. Our largest river in Poland, Warta, was just poisoned. There's no life in it. We just had a scandal with people adding uh, uh, industrial uh, grease to, to chicken feed. This is what they're feeding the people. And this is what happens. But this is so much on a larger scale. Our food security is in danger now. The present government, instead of investing in ecological farms like this, just subsidize large industries that are bringing fossil fuel from even farther, which is going to collapse if there's an extension of this war and we'll have hunger. It's really incredible. There is no thinking whatsoever. And this is why individuals such as myself, as you, have to think uh, our insect populations are po collapsing completely, over 60% to 80% drop in insect populations. Some people are just joking, this is bugs. But this is not just bugs. Insects are pollinating every single crop that we have. And we're passing a threshold where there will be massive food collapse because there's no pollinators to pollinate our crops. Inse uh, insects are mega important. They're the foundation of the whole ecosystem. And Einstein has said that if bees go, we're where we are bound to go to go next. Oh, Sunny's actually destroying camera now. It's lovely. Uh, Sunny, come over here. She's flossing using the camera. Oh, how great. And she just dropped it. Sunny, come over here. Why are you? Okay, I'll use this. Uh, our wonderful Sunny just changed the angle. We'll take advantage of this to show you this buckwheat that collected. Look at this. We just collected this with our hands. It's it's wonderful. It, it's it feels still soft. It's fresh. It still has mega load of vitamins as things are stored and um, oh okay she's working on the camera again as things are stored and specially cooked there are a lot of vitamins uh, go by the wayside there's a whole raw food movement that focuses on eating as much raw food as you can which is also has an ecological and energy side because if you're not boiling and if you're not cooking your food then you're actually saving in energy costs as well and um Another thing is 80 to 90 percent of your energy that you use for cooking is lost due to radiation. It just radiates away. It's the most wasteful pro process, energy process we have. What you can do, you can bring something to a boil, wait till it boils, be it beans, rice, and then t as soon as it boils, take it off the stove, wrap it in a thick blanket. Yes, yeah, sunny, right? Or uh, a comforter or a sleeping bag. And leave it there for maybe two, twice as long as it will be cooking. And when you open it up, it's all cooked. The heat itself will stay in there instead of nuking it or nuking. It will have more vitamins because instead of cooking at 100%. Okay, she's working on the camera again. As you can see the angle going. This is our operator over there. Sunny, we'll give you credit. We'll give you credit. Don't worry. You'll get credit for being the operator, for changing the angles. She's actually, we have the camera and the earth and she's digging it out. So, yeah. So, it's called hot boxing. Wrap your food. You'll have more vitamins because you won't be nuking it at 100 degrees centigrade. You'll be cooking it at 80 to 90 degrees. There'll be more vitamins. You use less energy. And the flavor is really incredible. It's so rich because you're not killing the flavor. I recommend that you do brown rice or rice. You'll taste a subtle taste of rice that you have never tasted before. I was really blown away by it. So uh, it's just a, a, another tip. Thanks, guys. Take care.